So a lot of you may be saving your renders in a PNG format because, well, we're just used to using PNG images in our everyday lives. And so did I until I discovered the EXR file format, which permanently changed my workflow for the better. We have to realize that PNG images are made to view images, and that if we're bringing images through a pipeline that we should be using a much better alternative. So what are the differences between image formats made to view and formats made to carry data? Typical viewing formats would be the mentioned PNG as well as the commonly used JPG format. Video viewing formats include MP4, AVI, MOV, and so on. There doesn't seem to be a video data format as far as I know of, but it's understandable as image sequences are way more versatile. Characteristics of viewing formats include the color being applied for viewing purposes, an example would be the sRGB colors applied to the final output so it can be viewed as intended without an additional color conversion needed, thus why it is a viewing format. They also tend to be lower bit depth, such as 8-bit, as most monitors are only capable of displaying lower bit depths anyways. As for channeling data pipeline purpose image formats such as EXRs, most image viewing software won't be able to preview them. They aren't made to be viewed as they are anyways. It's like the raw format for camera images. A good explanation is quoted in the official OpenEXR website. The purpose of EXR format is to accurately and efficiently represent high dynamic range seen linear image data and associated metadata. Strong support for multi-part multi-channel use cases. Let's talk about the limitations of typical viewing formats such as PNG and JPG when it comes to data pipelines such as when you're moving a rendered image to compositing or color grading. The biggest one would be that the output viewing colors are applied already and that it isn't linear anymore. Linear workflow is crucial when it comes to image manipulation because light is calculated linearly then we apply a viewing transform after it. This is an example of an over operation with and without the linear workflow. With it we get the proper color gradient and without it which would be applying the sRGB colors then doing the math we get a weird dark fringe. If we want to make the image linear again, we can do so by applying the inverse of the sRGB transform. However, if we do so, there would be steps between the gradient and information is lost. Especially because these formats are usually in 8-bit, their loss of information would be a big penalty, and there would be noticeable banding at times. You won't face these problems when using EXRs because they store data in linear and also have high bit depths of 16-bit and 32-bit float, as well as support for values outside of the 0 to 1 range. EXR being linear and having high bit depth is also necessary for the ACES workflow and honestly, any color management workflow that involves OCIO or OpenColorIO as it preserves the color data properly. Another benefit of EXR is being able to store multiple layers of image data in a single file, which is perfect for compositing. Render engines provide the option to save individual passes into layers and with Blender's file output node you can specify the names of passes, more on that later. An example of how this is ideal for compositing is that you can save passes to layers and then add them together to get the original image, and have more control over adjustments. While it may seem like because of the high bit depth and multiple layers being stored that EXR files would take up a lot of space, this is somewhat true especially when you're using 32-bit float bit depth, though personally I found that 16-bit is enough for most things. Fortunately, there are many types of compression algorithms available. The most common one and usually default in most softwares is the zip compression which is lossless. It's pretty neat but takes up more space. I personally use the DWAA compression which is one developed by DreamWorks. It's lossy but honestly there isn't really much of a noticeable difference at all compared to the lossless format. Here's a little experiment done by Troy S, the developer of Filmic, Blender, and AGX. It just shows that EXRs are not that large in file size after all, unlike how most perceive it to be. Lastly, this may be unexpected, this is more of a reason to use EXR over PNG specifically, but PNG takes more time to compress, thus making render times longer. This tweet by Riley Brown caught my attention. I knew PNGs took a while to compress, but wasn't aware that the impact could be this big across multiple images. I'm about to show you a potentially very helpful tip. So this is my preset file and when I, whenever I open Blender it starts like this and if I go to the compositing tab I have nodes enabled and right now they aren't connected but if you like check and uncheck it will update and the connections will connect again. And this is what I have for my compositing setup. Here I have a multi-layer EXR. I just set this to lossy DWAA. For file size and what you see here is a denoising setup using the, the file output node and this is like very helpful at first i didn't realize how powerful it was you can just add nodes as you wish between the input and output you can just pretty much name these whatever you want and and put in whatever you wish so let me try deleting everything except for 
these five nodes here. And if you see what this does is this adds the diffuse direct and indirect and it multiplies it by the diffuse color. So what that does, it pretty much gives the diffuse only result. And then after that, I denoise it with the normal and the albedo. What that does is uh, it gives a denoised diffuse only pass. So that's how I get a specific pass denoised. And then after that, and I do the same thing for all of the other passes and then add them together in compositing. And that is better than doing just this, which is what people normally do. Putting in the image, the full image with all the layers combined, all the passes combined, and then putting albedo and normal in. And the thing is, it's actually kind of wrong to do that because things like volume does not have a surface and it's actually correct to not include the normal and the albedo passes in or else it will give a weird look to it. Gotta keep that in mind. If you're adding motion blur and depth of field, you might have to denoise the emission and sky as well. Sky being environment. And usually I actually just remove this Z depth and be denoised and missed, yeah, even vector. Because I just use motion blur and side blender. So usually just D7. If I try rendering without the file output node and just use the default multi layer EXR output and import it, it doesn't even save the passes properly. Let me try without nodes. You can't use nodes if you want this to save properly. And even if it does, it's like there's just so many passes and you're just going to end up adding them to multiply it like what you have to do anyways. So it's like much better to just use the file up a node. Plus you can name them as you prefer instead of diff dire, <laughs> which is d diffuse direct. Just name it diffuse after adding these together. And that's about it for this video. I could have gone more in depth with the details, but only dealt with the basic ones for simplicity's sake. There are links in the description if you want to learn more about it. In summary, if you want to use image data, use the XRs. If you want to show images to other people, then a viewing type file like PNG is the right choice. Rendering in images is a complicated topic. If you're still watching, I applaud you. Thanks for watching. See ya.